Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 168 of Dissonant Waves. It is the history of Cybergrind. Yes, we have done... But wait. Wait, do you say? I... I fell asleep last week, so I have to kind of talk about what I did, what I missed. Um, so anyways, I'm going to start with uh, OCs. This is a fun little OCs album. It's uh, very, like, Boingo Boingo, 80s New Wave, just with their, the, the OC style. It's, it's good shit. Uh, favorites on it are, like, Goon and just the title track, Intercepted Message. No least favorites. Good album. Um, then with Ritz's Picks, we had uh, Infants Under the Bulb by uh, Uranium Club and uh, something by Met Dog that's about computers. I'm not going to go for the whole title because it's like a paragraph long. But anyways, um, starting with Uranium Club, this is a fun little Uranium Club album. It's more Uranium Club. It's very evocative of um, the older stuff like Operation, like the um, uh, the the uh, Operations just early shit it was good stuff i uh, really liked what was going on with the wall and that whole saga uh favorites for me probably the big guitar jack off in the sky and uh little uh small grain small gray man uh onto met dog uh this was just a fun good breezy album to like play in the kitchen um quite enjoyed it we'll definitely be coming back to it uh favorites on it are pulling up the track list right now I love that song too. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. What my what my computer's for and uh, computer and uh, computer games. And finally, onto Radiohead and Muse. Uh, for M- Muse, I only have two things to say, or one one real thing to say about it, and it is uh, this is the unholy child of dad rock and theater kid music. <laughs> yeah. This album sucked, uh, but my favorite off of it was The Globalist. I liked how it kind of built off, and I, I have a soft spot for anything Spaghetti Western. Uh, and finally, with the Eraser remixes, um, I don't have much to say about it. It was an interesting listen, and this will be probably something I want to put on when I want to hear that sound, but very so rarely do I want to hear that sound, so it's kind of a blender for me. Fair enough. And... Finally, as we rank them all, I'm going to put uh, Muse at the bottom, then uh, Tom York, uh, then I'm going to go um, Met Dog, OC's Uranium Club. That that about. Uh, Dominic, did you do Uranium Club as as number one last week? I believe so. Yes. I think it's uh, somehow a unanimous number one. It, it was a week late. <laughs> Here we are with unanimous <laughs> number one. Yeah. Let's see. Put that in the dissonant waves law. Let's see if we repeat that trick this week. <laughs> <laughs> this is an interesting list. We are delving deep into the world of Cybergrind, but we also got some other stuff too. Uh, the other stuff are tricks and picks. We return to Porcupine Indeed. Tree with In Absentia, and we continue the John Dwyer Absentia. Uh, in Absentia. In Absentia. And then we, yeah, we can... Absentia. It's... Yeah. Yeah, what, sorry. What about it? What about it? Uh, we're in it. Okay. Then we continue with John Dwyer into this Ziegenbach Klopf motherfucking thing. Um, nocturnal submissions. We'll, we'll just call it Goat's Head. Goat's Head? it's German for Goat's Head. Sure. Yes. Sure. I mean, I, I, I took German. I know how to say these things. Ziegenbach Klopf. I know. Anyway, and then we get the Cybergrind shit. Ritz and I chose three albums each. Ritz chose Super Deaths, Bury Your Teeth, Death Trippers, Death Trippers Season, and The Blind Equations, Death Awaits. I chose Sleeping on Stardust's Retro Violence, Modern Conflict. Zolls, we used to be cringe on the internet, and now we're just faggots. And Video Hell by Douglas Sheridan. On top of all of this, yes. almost by serendipitous chance, I went and saw a seven-band bill, which included Blind Equation, which included Your Arms in My Cocoon, Hey I Love You, Fly Over States, Red Sun, Endswell, and... Uh... Fuck, what's the other one? Stars Hollow, wasn't it? Stars Hollow, there we go. 
Just, uh, I remember something I wasn't even at. Wonderful show. Uh, 25 minute sets with Yarns and Mike doing a 35 minute set. Holy shit. You were not lying when you said Yarns and Mike Cocoon could pull off a hell of a fucking show. I don't understand how those songs come off sounding so good in a live, in a live setting. Um, but also the star of the show, fucking Blind Equation. It was really interesting hearing the album and then hearing the songs play live and then like going back to the album and being like, wow, there's some shit here. Um, okay. We have about eight albums to talk about. Uh, Tricks. You you did not choose Cybergrind, yes. so I will give you the option to choose whether we talk about Cybergrind first or not. Uh, let's talk about Cybergrind first. Do you have... I'd like to just do a, a fun disclaimer before we uh, start. I'm going to sound like shit throughout this episode, because I, I, I haven't been officially diagnosed of it, but I probably have strep throat, which is bad for two reasons, because one, it means it's kind of hard to talk. And two, my dreams of becoming the Fred Goat have um, kind of been put on halt. So you're going to have to just put up with some very monotone, Ritalin sounds this episode. Pour one out for Nancy Reagan. <laughs> if I pour this to you, I'll land on my crotch. Well, Goat Goat lives on. Anyway. Indeed. As the person who is coming to Cybergrind with the curriculum handed to you, where would you like to start talking? What's a good introduction? You uh, think? How about uh, I'm gonna start where 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 it was my least favorite? How about that? All right. What's your least favorite? Uh, Sleeping on Stardust, Retro Violence, Modern Conflict. Interesting. All right. Uh, this was one that I chose because it was recommended to us by Dan Macy during the interview. And I, I believe... was not at that interview. No. So. But I do believe that this is a uh, re-release of sorts. Um, double checking the release list now. Uh, yeah, they're maybe not. Uh, I thought it was like a compilation. Yeah, th- yeah. There was a retro violence demo that was released, and this is um, remixed, uh, remixed and remastered versions, and then I think some more stuff as well. So here we are. Um, Indeed, I um I disagree with Tricks to start off. I I, I figured as much. I can't lie and say it's my favorite of the Cybergrind, but I, I thought this had some pretty uh, interesting interesting elements that would happen into it. Uh, like I uh, messaged on the chat as well. There's a moment where I swore I swore they were interpolating Born Slippy, and I kind of actually just laughed at that. This is the one where I started. Uh, when I was like, where do I start with listening to these? I picked this one. And I think it was a decent um, kind of like a stone setting, kind of like the foundation of like, okay, we've got uh, some real new metal, screamo kind of riffs, a lot of vocal fry, but also a lot of like DIY elements, video game boss music elements, electronica kind of mashing all of that together in various different levels and ways. Just in general, it's it's where, you know, there's claustrophobia pop to fifth wave emo. This is kind of like the heavier uh, sibling. Like, let's let's do kind of fifth yeah. wave, but like make it way heavy. Turn that shit up to 11, kind of. Oh, yeah. Well, whilst we're going on that, I've, I've shared in the, the chat here, I, uh, I asked the big money cyber grind Discord, what's the best... Uh, a way to become an expert in cyber grind in nine hours. And uh, there's this little little post that's the completely abridged history of cyber grind, which was sent by one person who was uh, very helpful. The other person just told me to to look on Wikipedia. So uh, th- thanks, Jackass. Um, <laughs> on on with that, looking at that, going through that page, I mean, it's kind of a weird thing because obviously when you see Blind Equation uh, and go with your arms and my cocoon, I was kind of like, oh, that's Cybergrind and Fifth Wave Emo, and they need to try and it's always kind of been a thing, but with Emo and Hardcore, uh, kind of always been like side by side, but you look at the history of how Cybergrind has evolved, it basically hasn't evolved from from uh, Emo at all, let alone the Fifth Wave. Yeah, it's it's kind of evolved it's alongside It's kind of attached on. It's kind of just had a re... 
I guess it's just had a, a new wave the same time as Fifth Wave has, which is why a lot of these bands uh, are kind of, well, a lot of these underground bands have recovery, not every band Fifth Wave is doing Cyberground, but it's kind of why it's, it's when it, both of these waves have kind of very similar movements happening side by side, it's, it, it makes sense for people to do some crossover. Yeah, and I mean, Dan Macy is known as yeah. Bottom Surgery on that side of things. Douglas Sheridan is Online Friends. Mm-hmm. You know, the connections are very much there. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, this is... This one is alright if we're talking about uh, retro violence. This one was decent. I think, you know... If you're looking at the... Oh, like us, a crash course into what this is. This mm. gets you the basics. But I don't yeah, think... Yeah, and I, I guess... I don't think it stands out, I guess. It's like, it, it's, it's there, but it's like the... It's the lettuce of the sandwich. Yeah, this is the last one I listened to, so I can I, I guess I can see why I kind of it got lost in the other things. I like when free to play cybergrind kind of signals that this is like the uh, second half of the album. Pretty much Golden Disaster on is like way longer than most of everything else. But Pro Queer mm-hmm. I thought was another really cool standout moment too of like that beat for like a minute and ha- and a half is just kind of great. And then this is not our heartbeat is a really yeah. really cool closer, but no, the first half doesn't really super do it for me. I mean, it 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 doesn't help for the first half that it does kind of just like very quickly come and go, and I don't think it does too much with the songs to really grab interest. And maybe this isn't isn't the best start to sleeping on Stardust, but it's hard to, hard to tell. They got like how many albums have they got in just two years? This is their. Fifth album on Spotify. Yeah, there's a number of and stuff. The first here. one came out in 2020. Yeah, so mm-hmm. if this is what they originally just doing, kind of remastered or remixed, I'd like to see kind of. I guess what happens when they have the this intention kind of started f- from from scratch. I guess which I would assume would be on their the other albums. But I, I, yeah, I think when it just comes to what is. What is Cybergrind? I guess starting to talk about it. This is yeah a very uh, I get I, I don't want to use the words bog standard, but when I have a bit of a uh, a brain fog from strep throat, I can't really think of other words. I mean, it has a lot of the things of like well, there's a song called Free to Play Cybergrind Mobile RPG. All right, there is mm. there's a little bit of the self referential comedy. It's video game stuff. It's all kind of there. I uh, look to the special round. Kind of those weird inside jokes like Galuda my Booga. I don't even know what that's a reference to, but I assume it's the something. Can no. I say something? I'm not sure. I swear I know the reference, but I just like can't can't think of it. Uh, Probably Drake and Josh or something again or something. Probably. It sounds Drake and Joshy. Um. Yeah. I mean, I still like this. Like, it was a it's a good listen. I mean. Cybergrind's a genre in which he gets a bit a cried taste, I guess is, is it is, because this isn't my first ever listen to the genre. That was actually not even this year, um, because I would have listened to Blind Equation for the first time last year when someone randomly sent it to me. And I found at the start I wasn't really into it, and now I'm kind of like a lot more vibing with it, so yeah, it probably helps that I've, uh, that I've had that a cried taste going into this stuff, but this one didn't seem too too crazy uh compared, so maybe it's actually a bit of a better a better opener than uh that blind equation e p was that wasn't the death of weights album the one that we covered that was my first session it was the one with um with born to die, but I can't remember what the title of that is mm-hmm. it's literally called born to die as this is my first really like super awareness level knowledge of what cyber grind is, I was pleasantly surprised that like how quickly I got into it. Like, yeah, some of the albums, there's, I have issues with them. I can kind of see why people might be saying offish about it. It's a, an acquired taste. But, you know, as someone who's not even, like, the biggest metalhead or, like, the biggest hardcore fan, it was really interesting to see how quickly I was, like, getting into some of these albums. There, it, it's, it's like the thing yeah. of, like, it's hardcore, but there's also more melodic and, like, popular elements baked into it because of the other genres. So it's a little easier to like latch on to things. Uh, favorites, least favorites. I uh... 
I like pro, pro queer. Pro queer is my favorite. I like pro queer. Yeah. Uh, you you both do enough and do enough thing. <laughs> Tricks, you you start it. You 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 do your thing, Tricks. Uh, pro queer is my favorite. Uh, the rest is kind of just a blunder. Just because I listened to this one last. I listened to them a few times, but it was the last one I listened to. So, like, it was I, I had kind of experienced the depth of depth of the genre in a way, and then went to the starting point. I feel so. I, I'm not. I feel like I'm not accurately able to judge it as well as I should be able to. Uh, I like Pro Queer. I like uh, the Golden Disaster. Yeah, and Free to Play Cyber Grind Mobile RPG. This is not a hard It's pretty cool. Uh, no real least favorites. It was just kind of like, man. Otherwise, it was fine, but not like the most interesting. I agree on the least favorite. Favorites probably Parasite. Fair enough. All right, we yeah. went to Trix's least favorite. Let's go to my least favorite and talk about Video Hell. At uh, um, Douglas Sheridan on the beat. I yeah, I agree. This is the least favorite of the Cyber Grind. There's um. Whilst I admire the attempts of experimentation uh, happening, I felt a lot of it was just relying did too much on compression for the sake of compression, and it just got annoying to listen to it parts. And whilst I understand the the joke nature of um of some of it, it it didn't really feel like it was um it was hitting like like it wanted to be. Now, looking at the Bandcamp version, there is an extra song that is not on Spotify, the Lionel Messi of Tetris. I assume for because it has Tetris references in it. But I don't think that's super going to make a difference to me. I'll listen to it on my own. But mm-hmm. it, Yeah, I don't know. There's, there's... I mean, if you want to talk about like hardcore, in-your-face, kind of like aggressively just hard to listen to, this is probably the most on that list. Yeah, mm. like listening to "Eaten by Eaten Alive by Insects" is just listening to a siren for four minutes. It, it is, and I appreciate the um, attempts and like the interesting elements of the album. Like, oh man, like it is interesting knowing what online friends is and knowing what this is and being like, yeah, like there is there is certainly some shit here, and like it's interesting seeing the production differences. Like, yeah, Kane can do some shit. Uh, it's, I do need to beat Kane at Galaga. Yeah, you gotta fucking return your high score. I, I do. I've just been fucking busy with work. <laughs> like, I think Meat Lottery is an actually pretty cool song. I like Meat Lottery quite a bit compared to everything else here and compared to a lot of the online friends Meat Lottery is to. great. I just wish that it was more like that for the rest of the album. I also quite liked IHBL. Uh, IHBL, IHBL, IHBL. It's I hate band lab. I hate band lab. I hate band lab on band camp. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. But I I, I quite like that. It's a good good tune. That makes sense. It's it's one of probably one of the other ones because I feel like another one for Shizune is in that uh, eat a lot by insects kind of realm. Yeah. Reaching out for you in the dark after waking up alone is a nice kind of more interlude track that I do like, but it's it's almost. It's kind of like cool on its own, but in the, in the album, it, it feels like too much of a downward trend after so much intensity. Like, it's good that you're separating them, but like, eating alive by insects is just so fucking much. And then you immediately drop off and follow with something super, super, super chilly, but doesn't quite balance out, if that makes sense. Yeah. That's basically my thoughts on the um on the album as well. It was yeah, I think I think there were some good ideas thrown around, but I feel like there was just a lot of doing it for the the sake of doing it, or just I don't know. It, it felt it didn't even feel like too much of like oh, there's concepts really to be like pushed around in here and enjoy. It was just a I don't know, it was it was it was a half solution, uh, and there's not really much reason for me to want to get into the kind of sound that's happening. You know, it, it's it's like going into the caretaker again. It's the I, one I can... you you can see that, yeah. Uh, it, it's one that feels more just done for fun versus like trying to do something. Yeah, 
it's more of an auxiliary piece versus like lore, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's nice that we have it here as like a eighth piece of the cyber grind. That's all a sixth of a piece, I guess, of the cyber grind introduction, but on its own, it would not really hold up as a piece of like, here's what cyber grind is really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it kind of floats more on the like really aggressive, but also more electronic. Now, mm -hmm. do you wonder if I pop pop this pill out of the uh, the foil, if it will make a good, satisfying ASMR sound for the podcast? Sure. Let's let's see. How was that? That was pretty crunchy. That, that's yeah. what I want my spine to sound like later. Fair enough. This is this is me taking drugs live on air. This is no longer the uh, the innocent podcast because no one had ever ever on this podcast before been taking illegal drugs. Um, Hyde's dab pen. Illegal is a and, strong word. And well, I, 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 lived, I, lived in, I lived in Indiana and I smoked in Indiana, so. <laughs> and when I say illegal drugs, I'm fucking with everybody because this is kind of silly. For some people, their their bodies make that an illegal drug. That is true, but I'm not weak. I am weak. Ah, oh, sorry to hear that. And this is just a stressful. Another really crunchy sound there. Yeah. Hey, I can't have certain types of cheese. I wonder if penicillin, if there's a connection between being allergic to penicillin and lactose intolerance. There's not. Damn. Anyway. I'm just curved. I like Meat Lottery. Meat Lottery is great. Reaching out for you in the dark is also rather interesting. Everything else is meh, my least favorite. Just for the... No. I don't, I don't super like I want to be your bulimic boyfriend club mix either, but Eaten Live by Insects is such a thing to listen to. It's the thing you remember most of like, oh my god, I do not want to listen to this again. I fully agree with all the takes. I agree with my husband. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Shall we ro roll the dice and choose? Let's choose. What do you think, Ritz? Uh, let's do a very short one. Let's go do Death Trip a Season. Death Trip a Season. Death Trip a Season. So this is the only one of my picks that I didn't actually see live, but I figured, hey, they are. Uh, and they were the ones who opened for for the Your Arms and My Cocoon in New Zealand because they're a New Zealand-based cyber grind artist, which Ooh. is funny. I mean, I managed to pick three different countries, which is pretty cool. Yeah. And one of them being mine. Um, but yeah, they opened for Blind Equation, which makes sense when you realize that there is a, uh, a Blind Equation collab on this album as well. It is a short 10 minutes. It is a very quick cyber grind uh album and that is about as much as i knew going into this yes um yeah, this one's more of like a hip-hop and cyber grind thing which yeah there was a bit of that sound in there wasn't mm -hmm. there which makes yeah. sense too because cyber grind also relies on samples and like using samples mm. which yeah is also an element of hip-hop that Pops up rather frequently, so the crossover there, it's very organic. Although the uh, the album art says a hundred percent hardcore. I'm gonna be real. Not with... the, not the font and the uh, lightning. No, but oh, the yeah, face. Well, right. the, and the hundred percent mm. hardcore label. <laughs> mm. I, I am pretty tired. I remember Crowd Killer. Easy mode was fun. Everything else, I, to... I could not remember. I want to take my bedtime in the bathtub because that's my favorite song off the EP. Uh, Crowd Killer is definitely my favorite on this one as well. This was a, yeah, I think it, it's it's hard to explain it more than you've already done, Dominic. But there's like a hip hop slash trap influence that happens on this uh, on this quick little album EP, whatever it is. It, it's very fast paced and it's very like still. I wouldn't really call it running a mill because calling it all running a mill in this cyber grind. The thing just feels like a oxymoron. But it was in 10 minutes. I, I fucked with it. Yeah. I'd, yeah. Like, to, I'd, I'd like to see it live. And uh, there's, a, there's a chance I probably can because people, 
because bands and people from um from New Zealand are coming over a lot more now, which is very nice. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go see. New, New Zealand is a bucket list uh vacation for me. I can I can imagine that. Uh, the answer is that they probably have. Oh, I don't know. It's a bucket list. It is... Oh, but uh, they actually play played in America in. 20, I'm going to say 2023. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, cool. So that's that's even even more crazier. It is wild how bands can just go to other countries and tour and shit now. It's, who would yeah. think that Blind Equation could be on a global tour? That Your Arms and Make a yeah. could be on a global tour? Mm. Yeah. Like, uh, seeing uh, you, Your Arms and Make a this was basically like a secret show, like hometown show. And because there's so much going on with Tyler and the band going around the world. It was it was interesting. He was saying, uh, Tyler, that this is like the last time that they're going to be playing the old songs. At least in Chicago, like, is like the, the set list. That's cool. Because the uh, new album well, is coming out. Well, you they would have, yeah, and you just saying that they have uh, the songs written together as a band. Which would be a huge, interesting change given what the EP is. Mm. Yeah. Four four on some odd yeah, year. I mean, Huge evolution. Yeah, I mean Death Tripper season. It's 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 Death Tripper season. I think this is um in a sense, I think it's probably the the best of all the cyber games we've talked about so far. Yeah. And just because I think it's a lot more consistent but so there isn't much that's actually boring about it but but you know just because it's not memorable doesn't mean it's boring it's it's pretty quick and it's some you know it, it, it's a tight focus 10 minutes of of cyber ground and I'm, yeah that's about it yeah this one gets on by on the uh, contrast you would think that with a bunch of short songs that are like a minute or two that like if they're really good the quickness will kind of make it memorable but no it's the slower moments that work really well with this Makes, yeah, you know, crowd killer really cool. Uh, crowd killer, yeah, you know what I really like. I don't really have a least favorite. Uh, bed, yeah, bedtime in the bathtub and crowd killer, my favorites. Uh, no least favorite. And I just agree because I can't be bothered thinking for myself. To... Fair enough. Let's listen to Super Death, or let's talk about Super Death now. Bare your teeth. Well, Death Trip is rain. Death Tripper's reign is number one this week has already fallen. <laughs> that was fast. Super Death. I did get to see this one. They opened for the Brisbane show. I was um warned, I'm doing quotation marks, uh, uh, by my friends who I went with in the Brisbane show, who had seen them open for Liturgy, I believe it was. And... I I went into it blind. I didn't know about Super Death or anything like that. Turns out it's uh, one of the one of the members of Blind Girls. Oh, so oh. that was why they were there. So so this that's one of the uh, I, I I guess the connections to Fifth Wave. Yeah. And when we got on, this person came up shirtless with a uh, with a drummer in the background, put on a gimp dog mask, and off we went. Hell 30, yeah. 30 minutes later, I just said, well, I fucked. So, tricks. It was it was a crazy set. Yes. That Ziggenbach cough shit, super weak compared to this. Yes. This is what that thing oh, wants to be. It, it is. Like, 100%. Ziggenbach cough is like... It, that's like your, your 21-year-old twink. And his friends buying cheap leather harnesses at the sex store and going to the kink bar for the first time. Mm. Like, they have some leather, they have the sunglasses, they think they're so fucking cool. They don't know jack shit. This seems targeted. Everyone around them just knows who the fuck they are because they just stand out because they're so, like, there and they think they're in it. But, like, they're just kind of standing off off to the side by themselves. And it just all looks like they're just getting into it, which is great, you know. Get into it, you know. Enjoy yourselves and learn. Dominic, 
how the culture is. Just before you finish it. Yeah. Just before you finish. Sometimes I forget just how gay you are. (laughs) (laughs) You know, it's great when you're doing it for the first time and you're learning about subcultures and kink. And that's great. But bury your teeth is like the actual thing. Yeah. That's that's really the thing to say. Like that's that's my that's my overall like top line message. <laughs> yeah. My my way I... of describing this was a lot more tamer. I was going to describe this as the way I thought you hoped rape tapes would go. Ah, uh, kinda. But mm, no, rave tapes would have been more dance punky. Oh, that's, that's fair. At least in my imagination. Like I yeah. think, I think rave tapes could have done out by six, dead by nine. I'll say that, but I don't know about much else. I I remember the most terrible part of like just the set was was uh, and I and now the song, let's get your hands off me. It's just the way the music stops to him to just randomly scream "fuck you, fuck you, fuck you." <laughs> like actually stop and I'm like kind of like. He cuts out almost all of it, just so really focuses on the vocals. And someone can can use my favorite word because I don't like I don't like talking too much. Contrast. <laughs> That's that sounds like the word. Yes. No, this one really fucking rips. This is really cool. Yeah, this is good. It's. I guess it's it's very loose to use the word cyber grind. I guess because it doesn't really fit the exact same sound. That all the other uh, Cybergrind uh, 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 albums we've been listening to this week hit, but I think it's it, it's still close enough to count. They are listed as Cybergrind on Bandcamp, so it counts. It counts. That, that, that is the litmus test we use. Not always, but... Whatever the artist says they are. If the artist said this was a hip-hop album, I would say yes. If they said it was a pop album, they would say yes. If they said it was a country album, I would say yes. <laughs> the artist is always right, except for their opinions off the record. Yes. Really, I didn't listen to this one as much because of the other album we have yet to talk about. But Indeed. If, but if we didn't cover that one, this would have been the one that I would have focused on the most. Mm. Yeah, I feel that. But yeah, this one's just so it's so different to everything else that's happening and what we've listened to so far, and it just it's it's so dark in the right ways and it's so just industrial it's like the industrial drumming and stuff it just hits it's so good <laughs> super super deaf super fucks uh... ritz gets into bdsm <laughs> yeah bi people can also get into bdsm um, but... it's okay what what do you mean like we couldn't <laughs> You're just saying how super gay I am, so I'm just extending the olive branch to you, being like, you can come along if you like. You can, you can be this gay if you like. Uh, I, I cannot, because I'm asexual. Yeah, the invitation wasn't put out to you, Tricks. Go sit in the corner. Oh, Tricks, yeah, you're more than welcome I'll to come as well. No, Tricks is asexual. She doesn't want to come. <laughs> I'll, I'll, just, I'll just stay there, fucking uh, finger dipping in the dip bowl. Chix is the type of person to go to an orgy just to eat the free meals. That's yeah. exactly the joke I was making. <laughs> it is worth noting, of course, that some asexual people find it easier to express themselves through kink than actual sex. It, it is true. Uh, mm. Not my case, though. Ah, so I should return that dog mask I got you for your birthday. <laughs> I, I will wear a dog mask as a joke. I am not above that. We'll just yank but, your, yeah, yank your chain was, a little um, bit. This is this is a great listen this week. This is uh, when when you're covering as much as we would to get something that just stands out uh, like this is is always great. Uh, good or bad, but it was good, so it helps. Uh, absolutely, just odd, but like in the right way uh, set to see as well. Uh, I think they're touring over in a. In America, of blind girls, obviously, with with them being a member of blind girls, so they'd kind of be there. But I think they're actually doing <clears throat> and doing sets with them, so 
They are the flyover states to Hey, I Love You's Hey, I Love You. It's, uh... Yeah, I'll, uh... As was described I'll to me, this, this is... those two bands are the same, except you swap out one member. Hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, Super I Death. mean, that was when, when um, MJ Lundeman opened for Wednesday. That's literally just Wednesday without the singer. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Um, yeah, I like uh, Out by Six, Dead by Nine. I like uh, Are You Fucking Kidding Me? Godless Behavior. My least favorite is probably something like Bullet Eater. Bullet Eater is one of my favorites. Um, as is Melted, Melted Faced Terror Bite Mind. And Are You Fucking Kidding Me? And I, I don't really have a least favorite. I don't really have a least favorite. Favorites get your hands off me. I do like Out by Dead, uh, Out by Six, Dead by Nine, and uh, I do like. Are you fucking kidding me? I don't have a least favorite. Then, lastly, on the Cybergrind tour, we come to Blind Equation. Don't we have? Don't we have? Oh, two? you're right. Yes. Yeah. Well, we'll so we'll cover Blind Equation first because I really like to talk about Blind Equation. Yeah. For- I, I forgot my own pick for a second, yeah. which I apologize to Zal. You, yeah. We'll talk about you in a minute. Yes. Um, but I saw Blind Equation, as I said, and Ritz, you had problems giving them a plushie. So... No, I didn't have problems. I asked, I asked that they wanted a plushie, and they said they couldn't take it home. I'm like, that's fair. Yeah, so like you wanted it, Office they wanted it. If you ever want it, and they never, and they never wanted it. I mean, they they wanted so, it. It was just it was hard to really transport it because they live in Chicago. Yeah. And so, I did the thing of going to them with an Eevee that I had, and I gave them an Eevee. Which is adorable. Yes. So that's how we started the night, and then I saw the set, and I was fucking blown away. Yeah. Uh, did the uh, fuck. did the key terrorist look like the biggest fucking nerd you've ever seen? Yes. Cause, cause that's how you know it's going to hit. Yeah. Uh, the... He, um, he and tricks. This is all you need to know. He on the Sydney show was wearing a Dragon Force shirt. Oh fuck yeah! <laughs> that's, no, that's all you need to know. Yeah, I mean this. That was this was the part of the set where like the mic broke down a little bit and they had a little problems with like some of the tech. But like they they rallied, mm. they came back. Huh. But it's really easy when you have songs like "Speed Running Your Life" and you betray the ones you loved. You just yeah, have, you... did they open with uh with you betray? <sighs> In memory serves, they opened with "Speed Running Life." But they might have, I I mean I oh God I can't remember exactly. Maybe they did you betray, but they also were doing some sound checks. And so, like, my memories of, like, hearing those in the sound yeah. checks are filtering in. But I definitely remember hearing the speedrunning life riff early on. Mm. No, but fuck. They played, I think the first first bit of their set from memory is, like, Jeff Awaits, and they play a couple, couple songs from the uh, other records. If I'm not writing down the tracks, I'm not going to super remember. I'll be honest. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Which is why I usually when I go to shows I put down the track list just so I remember. <laughs> but there was too many too many artists, too many songs, too many things I did not know to even bother. Plus the pictures oh, I took were fucking great. Right? The I'll fucking see if I can find it. The fucking picture I got of Tyler Crowd surfing was so fucking good. Mm. Like you yeah. uh I have the Melbourne set list, which would probably be very similar. Probably. It was You Betrayed the Ones You Love, mm-hmm. Death Awaits, Speed Running Life, Killing Me, Suffering in Silence, LCD Dem, Blur, Never Getting Better, and Born to Die. So, six of the songs of this album. And I bought the CD. And I fully, uh, I love that I did that. That's a great decision. Uh, uh, I bought the it. Blind Equation CD as well. I have the Blind Equation bootleg. 
Well, I have the arms of my cocoon bootleg, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Trix, I would love to know what uh, your general feelings are so far about Cybergrind, given its origins. I'm gonna be honest, I quite enjoy Cybergrind. I enjoy a bit more, like, the more fantastical elements of it, like, because uh, I'm approaching it from, like, a metalhead's perspective. Yeah. And so, like, I like when it's a little extra. Some of the and vocals like, we listen to are kind of circling Cookie Monster, I know. Yeah, they are. And I'm not a huge Cookie Monster fan. Um, and I I do have a favorite this week, which I'll admit we haven't talked about yet, which might give it away. Um, but Blind Equation is, is good. I I will definitely be coming back to it. Okay. Here's a here's a question though, Trix. What are you doing on August second? Yes. Uh, fuck, I don't know. That's going to be... August 2nd is a Friday. So Probably we'll be working. But Blind Equation is playing in New York. Where in New York, though? The city. Yeah, I it, it's hard for me to get out to the city. They're playing it elsewhere the hall. Because I, I would have to catch a bus to New York City... Uh, find a uh, Airbnb in the city for a night, uh, and it, it it would be it, it's a hassle for like I I would need like three days off from work and I'm not getting that uh sure. around a of a a, a a show like that. I'm just saying, Blind Equation could be the first full band that we all see live. It could no. be, but probably not. Yeah, full band. So you were saying. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Tyler from Your Arms of My Cocoon is the one we've all seen live, but we, Tricks, you, yes. you and I saw him solo. Ritz and I have seen him now with the full band. It feels like it feels like Your Arms of My Cocoon has probably changed their set completely since you, uh, you first saw saw them. I mean, that was yeah, that was well, just a surprise he, he appearance. Just one song. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It was it was like a violin played, played thing too. Played something on the violin, and then came back for the end too. Yeah. So th- this actually is a really good representation of like what we're talking about with the connection between fifth wave emo and cybergrind, because like yeah, here is a show that is blind equation and your arms in my cocoon, and then we see your arms in my cocoon hanging out with Glass Beach and Home is Where. Mm. Yeah. And your arms in my cocoon is the. Thing this is the nexus of everything we have seen live collectively. It is the nexus of everything. It is. This is all your arms, my cocoon's fault. Anyway, should we actually go back onto Death Awaits? Because I don't think we've actually talked that much about it. No, I. I would like to take an. I'd like to take an aside there because you mentioned a song called LCD DEM. I think that's actually a reference to a Yume Nikki fan game. Believe it or not. I don't believe it. Interesting. Uh, I, I vaguely remember seeing one years ago uh, called LCD DEM, and it, I, I feel like it would fit in, it fit in with the whole aesthetic. Yeah, I believe. I'm gonna it. Google that now. Especially given that it seems like the artists have been around for a little while in the scenes and like doing the work to become like musicians and like doing different bands and shit, and so that combined with I'm sure is like a lot of video game knowledge and references and all that it all kind of coalesces mm-hmm. like there's just something anyway. really awesome about the way they pair riffs that sound like they come from like a fucking Castlevania or something and just like make that like a counterpoint to what is otherwise really really heavy scrams mm-hmm. and I mean there's a difference as well I guess we got a call when it comes to this stuff I mean when we when we talked about hey I love you that was that was chiptune emo. Yeah. And this is, yes. it has those elements that chiptune has. But it's not in that kind of same same lane. It is, I wouldn't even really call it Scramsy, because it's, <laughs> it's not like it's really Screamer. It's more of a shout. I mean, there is screaming in it, don't get me wrong. No, but it follows more of that, that grindcore thing. And that's obviously how Cyber Grind fucking sure, sure. starts out. It's, 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 it's the names that go into it. But as somebody who's first listened to this was uh listened to them was a born to die and I'm going into this, this 
you know, maybe it's a cry of taste, maybe this is accessible, but this just fucks. It's, it's really good. For what is a very obscure, obscure genre, I'm like, kind of mad that didn't really properly listen to this last year. I am too. Yeah. It's, it's very funny. Uh, my roommate was describing my taste in music as Squidward music. Hmm. And I'm like, I can't even be mad because I'm thinking about what we're listening to this week. And if you if you told somebody yeah. who has no knowledge of what anything we're listening to is, like what we're doing, and then we put it on, they're going to be like, yeah, this is fucking dog shit. What the fuck are you listening to? It's fucking Squidward music. Um, I'll, um, I'll show we're, you we're past right post little... at this point. But it's like, no, if you actually listen to it, it's fucking great. And, like, if you yeah. like hardcore and you like metal and you like kind of, like, the building blocks, basically, of what genres are now, it's a lot easier just to kind of float between things. Also, want to point out, really bringing it back, uh, Death Awaits is also listed as a Hex D album on Bandcamp. Yeah, that that was the other thing to kind of compare Cybergrind to because I kind of had that in my mind was um was Team Meccano. Yeah, yeah. And there are I, I I don't think there's so much in this one as there wasn't more the the Zoll and the um uh the fuck what well, wasn't sleeping on Stardust the Douglas Sheridan. Thank you. My going into that. I I was kind of thinking back into to Team Meccano on that. Yeah, absolutely. Like. And yeah. Hex D is a, is a I, I was thinking of Hex D a lot. Hex D as a reminder is more based on like interpolating songs and like making them basically deep fried and like speeding them up and really playing with them and making it they basically your their own thing. But remember, which uh which record label hosted uh Team Makana? Oh fuck. Um Dismiss Yourself. And Dismiss Yourself has has done some uh, things for for emo as well. They they released the deluxe edition of Your Arms and My Cocoon. That's one they did. So it all kind of comes back around, doesn't it? It yeah. it's like Trix was striking out with something that she remembered, and then Alps it just got subsumed into the giant wave of DIY modern music. It all connects back together. Yeah. Uh yeah no like it's it's very funny how almost everything we've we've done just comes back to us in different ways like this is it basically is. this is a this is a culmination moment and like oh yeah fucking fifth wave fucking hex d fucking your arms in my cocoon everything mm -hmm. I also really like how blind equation is into like. Reusing some of these riffs they're choosing as well, like you would train the ones you love, kind of being repeated in warmth in a way, kind of mm -hmm. tying those two tracks together really fucking fucks. Like when I'm really feeling it, I'm just putting on speed running life. You betray the ones you love in warmth, just on over and over and over. That's been my week. They're just yeah, I think the other vibe. surprise is that this is this is a bit more poppy of an album than you might expect from the whole genre. And this as well, it is. Got a lot of catchiness to some of these choruses that happen as well, despite the whole chaotic nature to it. It's like it, it it's it's pretty well structured too. Yeah, that's yeah. the fun of so it. For the sake of which, yeah. it might be so, it might be some like basic structure in, uh, inside all this chao uh, chaoticness, but it all just kind of works together. It's like it's not getting too chaotic for the sake of hey, we're listening to this just for the sake of it. It's actually bringing a point to the into the music to stand on its own and yeah i i like this um never getting better is something i've felt over the last weekend with this fucking fruit never getting better is pretty good it's one of those nice things where when you when you're trying to skip through tracks and they start and they all sound kind of different from each other mm. it, it's it's one of those things that i really appreciate about certain albums it's like yeah these are all coming from different places it's not just like Standard rock album where they all start with a guitar or a drum. Yeah. Um, and then there's a Def Trippo uh, collaboration on here as well, like there was a Blind Decoration collaboration on the Def Trippo album. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's all tied together. Peep Sylvia. <laughs> 
I thought it was Pepe Silvia. I think it was Pepe Silvia. It is Pepe Silvia. I always read it as Peep Silvia in my brain. Uh, Blind Equation is going to be playing again in July. I might go see them again. We'll see. I, I Uh, I might go try and see Shaky Graves in that July show. Hope it's not too late for tickets on that one. On the first, they're playing with Thought Crime, Ultra Deluxe, and Homewrecker and the Bedwetters. That's a great band name. Hell yeah. Favorites, these favorites? Speedrunning Life. Favorites. Check the one. Doing that thing, that doing that thing again. I, I was just saying favorites, but uh, favorites. Uh, Speedrunning Life, uh, Even Trade, the one I love, and um, I quite like The Last Glimpse of Me. No least favorite. Dumb. Okay. Spearing Life, You Betrayed the Ones You Love, Warmth. Those are the three best songs. No least favorites. Uh, favorites, uh, You Betrayed the Ones You Love, Never Getting Better. I uh, do like uh, Warmth as well. Uh, there probably is a least favorite on here, but I'm not going to remember it. So. All right. Sorry to have forgotten you then, Zal, but here we are. We used to be cringe on the internet. Now we're just faggots. Indeed. Kind of. I, I truly think we've picked three different types of. Uh, <laughs> right when you compare like what I picked and what you picked, Dominic, it's in like three kind of similar vibe bands uh, on each side of the spectrum here. Yeah, you've picked three probably more polished produced. I picked three more DIY kind of underground, of, uh, underground of the underground in a way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But no, of my three, I like this one the most. I do yeah, too. I, like I think this is my favorite of the week. I'm going to be honest. I wouldn't put it that far, but it's it's definitely the best of uh, of Dominic's pick, and um, I prefer it to Death Tripper. I uh, still have Super Death and uh, Blind Equation over this day. I think that's fine. Yeah, like that yeah. being said, this this is the this is the most hex D out of all of them. Yes. Yes. Uh, Love yourself very much is just some other song that I don't know offhand, but like just reused and redone in a way that works for what they're doing here. Mm-hmm. And then like the fucking last track dot dot. What a, what a fucking ending! Holy shit! It is. So, do you want to know why I have not mentioned kitchen music in the context of Cybergrind? Because <laughs> it's impossible. This is the only one that was, like, kitchen musicable. <laughs> really? Yeah. I love that. Can you elaborate? The kitchen listening to fucking Zowl. It's... It... I, I feel like it's a bit more upbeat, like it car- it carries itself more than the other ones, which are kind of all over the place, which is cool. But this one, I feel like, just keeps it consistent. Yeah. As as the band camp thing says, it is, it is she, they, core, ass band, making music for faggots, because we are faggots. And it might also just be that I am in the prime target demographic for this album because uh, I am also a Shive who is a faggot. This is like I, I guess something of a collaboration between Death Dawn and Solemn because they have, they have the deal and, that uh, makes them all. On YouTube Music, it says uh, Lil T for T, which is a great name. Yeah, this is also on their Bandcamp page as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, Little T for T is also Suicide Twink and other things. Mm. I, I feel like I, I have encountered some of these names before on Twitter. Nah. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't think that'd be the hugest surprise in the world. It, it wouldn't be at all. Like, I could be following one of these musicians who wouldn't know. No, but this is, this, it's cool that this one was like the big surprise because I like brought this one up in the Dan Macy interview as well, being like, hey, I just came across this one because of the album name. Do you know this? Is this mm-hmm. any good? And they were like, oh, yeah, I like this one. Uh, they, it was on the Cybergrind uh, Discord or something where it came up. <clears throat> That's cool. And I got the Dan Macy seal of approval. So I'm like, you know what? Let's, let's fucking include it. Hell yeah. 
but yeah, this one lead leans more into like the hex D side of things, which I, I also think leads bodes well for kitchen music because it's a little more chaotic. That's interesting that but you in put like, it that way. A, a like a rhythmic, a rhythmically chaotic, like chaotic in a way that makes sense. Ordered chaos. Is blind equation not ordered chaos though? It it is, but it's a, not the right flavor. I don't know how to explain it. I also am my brain is baked today because it was like a hundred and six degrees Fahrenheit or forty degrees Celsius in the kitchen. That's quite a lot. Yeah. I now, just dropped my vape and it landed fucking vertically. Hell yeah. Now, on, on the little T for T page, at least, we used to be cringe, it's not listed as hex D. But, you never know. It, it, it's, it, I, I wouldn't call it hex D, but like, I notice very similar elements. If you're that deep fried on the internet, you probably know what hex D is. If you don't know the name of it, you probably know like the idea of it. Yes. Hmm. Which is kind of the thing where genre names break down a bit, especially when you get to so many things that transcend and just do what they want to do. Like, yeah, XD, Fifth Wave Emo, Cybergrind, it all works to, like, rally people, but even in these six albums, Cybergrind has already proven itself to be way bigger and way just expansive than I think just the name Cybergrind implies, at least when you hear about the Discord and everything else. Which reminds me, I should go type Cybergrind into Big Money Cybergrind. Give me two seconds. So it's the channel Cybergrind, Cybergrind, Cybergrind. Also, look, can <laughs> we... Some, what? Some fuckwit just typed what is Cybergrind into the Cybergrind channel. Fucking ban him. Also, can we all type Cybergrind into our chat, please? Yes. Yeah, okay, that's fair, that's fair, that's fair. Cybergrind. Perfect. There is our. Is, is that going to be? Everything is solved. That's our. That's our art. <laughs> that's our art. Starting with B R. Gotta piss B R B. I really had to piss, man. What can I say? You, you gotta do your pre pod. You gotta get it all out pre pod like I do. It just ends up working really I've well. Been, I've been drinking drinking water. I've had to do it, which is... I have two, man. I I was in a 40-degree kitchen all day. To be fair, Ritz, you were making tea and water. Making water is just a euphemism for peeing. Yes. Oh, God. I don't want to talk anymore. <laughs> Ritz will now be replaced by an AI for the rest of the episode that we have trained on all of our past scripts. <laughs> Yeah, I give a I give a thumbs up to the Zal album. This this is really interesting, and I like the use of samples, and I like the it's it it is more chaotic in the sense that there are just some songs that just go really hard, and then the, some of the songs don't go as hard, and then it's kind of like a surprise. Yeah, like "Kill Your Demons" and "Love Yourself," "Soulmate," and "Dot Dot." I think are the big highlights for me. Uh, "Love Yourself." Um, dot dot and uh, you could die young, which I think are the same ones you said. No, you didn't have you. Do, you can die young, young. Yeah, as a, as yeah a soulmate. Also worth Cheese mentioning. Cheese sandwich. I I also want to just mention dot dot. Also, then kind of goes into claustrophobia pop because it sounds a lot like an Elizabeth Whittington track. Yeah, I could see that. Like that is thematically just something I feel like that would be on an, an album. Yeah. Um, Ritz, what are your favorite and least favorite? Oh, you said cheese sandwich. That's right. Yeah, I said cheese sandwich. Cheese sandwich. All right. Do we want to stop and pause and just rank the Cybergrind albums first? Uh, I'm, I'm happy to. Just yeah. the Cybergrind albums. Uh, Let, let's rank these. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll, 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 I'll. Uh, Douglas Sheridan at the bottom. Sleeping on Stardust. Jeff Chipper. Zal. Uh, and then it's very close, but I think I have to do Super Death then Blind Equation. Um, I will go. Um, 
sleeping on Stardust. Uh, um, we'll go Douglas Sheridan. Um, Death Trippa, Super Death, Blind Equation, Zal. I'm gonna go Douglas Sheridan on the, on the bottom. Then I'm gonna do Death Trippa. Then Sleeping on Stardust. Oh, this is the tough part now. Do I pick Super Death or Zal? You know which one you'd like more, Dominic. Given to the dog mask. <laughs> All right, we'll do Zal. Do you still own the dog mask? Of course I do. Hell yeah. Like I said, I go to the bar. Come on. <laughs> anyway, <coughs> Zal, then Super Death at the top is going to be Blind Equation. That said, hell yeah. We have two more albums to talk about. <laughs> Let's get it out of the way. Let's talk about Ziegenbach Kopf. I don't like it. I'm done talking. I don't, it's not great. I don't like it either. <laughs> I it's... I purely picked this to set up a joke for my pick for two weeks from now. Incredible. Ziegen... Also because um... I thought this was a weird moment in John Dwyer's history, and I wanted to at least mention it. Can I... Uh... Can I do the take that I hope that everybody else agrees with so we can just hurry up to Porky Pantry? Yeah. And that's sure. if the, the the songs are repetitive, the jokes aren't really funny, and whilst I do admire the uh, industrial sound it's going for, it is done better in this day and age and probably by the bands around that day and age. So as a shit post, it doesn't really hit that well. As an album, it doesn't really hit that well. And... um. Hearing that as John Dreyer doesn't make me care about it uh, any more or any less. That's fair. I would agree. It's it's just kind of embarrassing remnant of the early 2000s, you know, doing like a gay comedy BDSM band could have potential. Uh, this is not it. This is the most bland, repetitive music of the bunch. Um, I can definitely see that it's John Dwyer. Because I do see the, I do hear the intercepted message in it, mm-hmm. but like, goddamn, Th- this again is just putting on the cheap leather harness and going to the bar and thinking you're doing it. And if you're there to learn, mm, yeah. great, but he, I don't think he's there to learn. That's fair. Um, but there's five other John yeah, Dwyer I, bands. I really don't have much. Yeah, we have uh, Pink and Brown is one of them. Yeah, it's there's just a couple more. It's just not. Uh, I'm I'm curious to see what your uh, what your joke will end up being, but I'm telling you now the setup is not that great. That's fair. Anyway, you had a theory about Porcupine Tree. I don't think we have any favorites or least favorites. No. No. Okay. This is this is the definition of a blender. I think that even that's generous. Yeah. But uh, anyways, my theory on Porcupine Tree, and it relates to Muse and Radiohead. They are a British prog band from around the same era as Muse and Radiohead. So I believe that I cannot really form an opinion on Muse and Radiohead because Porcupine Tree is filling up the slot for where they should go. I can see what you mean. Just give me two seconds to to check out my... I have a theory here. Okay, the year of this album was 2002. So, no, the actual actual theory I have, Jake's, is that they just stole it from Tool. (laughs) This this is just Anima. This is what Anima sounds like? I... I, Not really. I, 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 I heard some fuck... I mean, it was a bit more orchestral, I guess, but... In its uh, in its chord, uh, there was a, there's a, there a bit of that sound in there, Shrix. Yeah, but I, there's no banjo on um, Enema. I can definitely hear the Radiohead kind of like comparisons with something like the Sound of Muzak. It's yes. got that like alt kind of vibey feel. Mm-hmm. Very nineties in its. And I have also been listening to this album since it came out. Oh God. You were like two years old when it came out. Three, okay. 
<laughs> but this, my father loves Porcupine Tree. You're asking him, Daddy, what is a heart attack? What's a lady? And Porcupine Tree is actually named after a um, math equation. Fun fact. <laughs> they really are math rock. Yes. Well, can you solve but, it for us? Yes. Uh, I... <clears throat> I, f I fucking no. It's like it, it's the description of like the answer of a math equation. Mm. It looks like a porcupine tree. But uh, yes, this is a, a phenomenal little album. Uh, not it's not little. It's a phen phenomenal album. It's all right. <laughs> this has probably their biggest hits on it, save for um, maybe something like um, oh, what's the what's the other. Uh, off dead wing uh, open car i think i understand yeah the spotify has open cars the most popular at the moment but the most streamed is trains yes i i i think i understand if you feel the way i think you feel about radiohead and muse is comparable to the way i feel about porcupine tree you get it you can acknowledge yeah. that there are some really cool songs you ca you kind of like some of them but it all kind of just passes through you a hundred percent. Like you're never gonna quite be like. I prefer two. I love them, but you're also like they're good. To, you know, I can see the appeal. Yes, that's exactly how I am with Radiohead and Muse. Yeah, but we we do have to cover Porcupine Tree and Steve Wilson at some point. We have to cover more of them. So I have I have something I was thinking about because we're gonna do another Radiohead and Muse episode in July with a special guest. I think I think you need to pick a porcupine tree album to pair with it. Okay, uh, I, I I will look into it. Um, I I will have you uh, DM me the um, albums we're doing so I can like pick one of the same era. Uh, there is not one of the same era. Well, I might also pick Steve Wilson. Fair enough, because remember, which he's like he he's the front man. It's it's like picking a Tom York album. I guess, yeah. Like, I guess the closest thing would be picking the incident, but even then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wonder if this would have done better in a week where it went so focused on Cyber Grind and my throat. That's fair. I mean... But... It's cool. I, I, it, I, I dig the idea. You have to listen to it. Like... I, it's one of those ones that's hard to explain. I've heard I've heard this album in particular described as like Pink Floyd meets Crosby, Stills and Nash. I hear that and I think you're crazy. Like I hear that and I'm like, this album? Really? This is the one that's the popular one? Like Yeah. I have that thought in my head so like I'm like, yeah, this is cool, I get it. But I'm also like, this is the one? Yeah. I can't quite make sense of it. We'll we'll do Dead Wing next. Which is uh, the album that came out after In Absentia, and it's their second most popular. Because while some of the songs are interesting, I would say that there are also a number of songs here that just kind of come and go. Yeah. But I, I think this, uh, this album has like, some phenomenal songwriting on it. Like If you like, read into like, Trains, it's this beautiful... It, he paints beautiful pictures with words. I, I can't form full sentences at this point it's 4 30 in the morning <laughs> i think gravity eyelids is a nice little image mm -hmm. i want to remember more about this album and i just i just can't other than it just sounded like tool and it was a bit more orchestral i mean it's not like i hated it i'm just i don't fuck with it that hard it's really yeah it, it really exists i i understand that yeah, yeah. i I, I understand that. Now now you know how I feel about Radiohead and Muse. <laughs> that was that was the real reason I picked this. Is so to give you guys the exact idea of how I feel about Radiohead and Muse. <laughs> oh boy, I can't wait to cover King of Limbs. <laughs> <laughs> uh my favorites are a blender. Uh I like blackest eyes. I like Heart Attack and a Lady. I like Strip the Soul, Sound of Muzak. My least favorite's probably around Prodigal and Point Three. Point Three has a great bass line. Um, 
Your favorites for me, though, are Blackest Eyes. I love Trains. It is just such a beautiful song. Um, the Sound of Music is, music is great. Um, and <clears throat> Wedding Nails. I really like Wedding Nails. I like the kind of vibe it, it conjures. No least favorites. I know I just gave it some compliments, but now I'm ready to rate it within the context of all the other stuff we've listened to. <laughs> yes, me too. Uh, so, like I said, uh, Douglas Sheridan's at the bottom still. I would also still... Well... No, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Let me rephrase. Ziegenbach Kopf is now at the bottom. Then we have Douglas Sheridan. Knew that would happen. And I'm going to be the most generous person I can be. And I'll put Death Tripper next. And then Porcupine Tree. That's fair. And then Sleeping on Stardust. Uh, Zal, Super Death, Blind Equation. I'm going to do Zieg at the bottom because I didn't care for it at all. Is the nice thing I could say. Then Dalda Sheridan, then Sleeping on Stardust, then Death Tripper, then Porcupine Tree. Just because it's kind of it, it's Death Tripper and Porcupine Tree are probably very. Yeah, let me rephrase that. Sleeping at the bottom, Douglas, Sleeping on Stardust, Porcupine Tree, Death Tripper, Zol, Super Death, Blind Equation. I, I enjoyed Death Tripper uh, a bit more than I was giving it credit for in that ranking. It's a bit hard when it's like ten minutes compared to an hour and ten minutes, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I think I yeah. think I think I enjoyed Jeff Trip more. Tricks. Um, I'm going to put um, Ziggenbuff down at the bottom. Universal number eight. That's a first for me. I think <laughs> probably not. Um, then I'm going to keep my rankings pretty much the same, although I'm going to sandwich Porcupine Tree in between Zal and uh, Blind Equation. So it, my, my overall rating would be Ziggenbuff, Sleeping on Stardust, Douglas Sheridan, Death Tripper, Super Death, uh, Blind Equation, Porcupine Tree, Zal. Well, no universal number one, but that's okay. That is okay. Because I picked Trix Cybergrind. I just yes. stole that win from you, Ritz. I'm sorry. Yeah. Anyway, next episode is going to be 169. And you know what that means. It's time to talk about comedy albums. With a special guest. Returning for the first time. In general, it's the first guest I believe that's returning ever, aside from Corey. But Corey's just our Green Day correspondent now, I feel like. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Minimi is coming back. Hell yes. And so I'll say mine. I picked uh, The Lonely Islands and Credit Bad. That's the first album I thought of when we, I thought about doing comedy albums, so I picked it. Who wants to go next? That was also the first album I thought about. But I ended up picking two albums. Uh, I picked a Christian Ska album. Uh, or EP, Sun Seeds, uh, Jesus is a Friend of Mine. And then I figured I will never have another opportunity to pick this album I listened to a ton of in high school, <laughs> and that is Ninja Sex Party's NSFW. I mean, you could pick Ninja oh. Sex Party whenever you want, I guess. You're, you're free to do whatever I you want. not listening to those types of bands I know, in, in I know, I... would stop being bullied, but I didn't listen, and I still got bullied, so... <laughs> On the, on the bright side, I didn't have to listen to them. Ritz, what did you pick? Oh, that's right. I had to, yeah, I got to pick. Uh, I decided I'll, I'll, I'll continue on with some New Zealanders. So I picked Flight of the Concords, Flight of the Concords. No Tism. Uh, well, Tism were more of a satire. I still feel like Flight of the Concords are more comedy, you know? Yeah, mm. Tism were making fun of sex jokes. Father Cogs was just making sex and jokes. Father. Yeah. Now we have all that. And then we have uh, Mini Me has picked an album himself. He has picked Tenacious D's self titled Tenacious D. So we got the the internet comedy era just all in one fell swoop. Yes. 
Uh, again, it's going to be The Lonely Island and Credibad, Flight of the Concords, Flight of the Concords, Ninja Sex Parties, NSFW, Sun Seas, Jesus is a Friend of My EP, and from our special guest, Tenacious D by Tenacious D. I have been Dominic. You can catch me online at D-A-C-I-C-H-O-C-K-I on Twitter. Uh, Dominic Chikoki on YouTube if you must. I'm also on the Games My Mom Found podcast. We will be doing an episode soon on Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memories. That episode might not be out by the time this one is out. Who knows? But uh, you can be prepared for it when it is. So go listen to that. Uh, I have been Trix and I am living inside of your walls. Uh, follow us all on Twitter. Check out our Redbubble store. You know, all, all the normal stuff. Go uh, check out Dominic's GoFundMe. If it's still up. It is. All right. And then so, Ritz, yeah. Ritz's stuff is going to be in the description below. I'm assuming he doesn't want to say it all right now. I'll say I'm yeah. Ritz, I'll, be the, I'll, I'm Ritz, I'll be at the doctor's office. And hell yeah. That has been Cyber Grind, everybody. Cyber Grind. Cyber Grind. Grinding my cyber right now. Say it, Ritz. Uh, no. Not saying shit. You hear to hear first, folks. Ritz being a brat. Cyber grind. I'm I'm gonna be honest. All of the memes about the brat, um, fucking album art, the second one that came out. Uh, for a while, I thought those were about the Skull Kill notes, 